I was so much betrayed by my friends. All those who betrayed me will suffer in life, I swear. And the man of God rejected me at my desperate need of prayer. He prayed for my friends because I don't have money. Ha! I pray. God will reject him too in Jesus' name. I was molested at my tender age. And I was a victim of rape and maltreatment. All those who molested me will never be forgiven in Jesus' name. Everybody here, they are milogu. My fallen in Do me, I do you. Go and go verse. My husband left me to marry another woman with two children. He no go break through in life. A dabi, tiki ba shepo u no chai balem. Ni biki bi toba wa kolo bi remi koni dafu. Olukoya olubenga. Olukoya olubenga. I am here because of you. And what? Far away, agony of the far away. Agony of the far away. Agony of the far away. Agony of the far away Agony of the far away They far away Agony of the far away You are told you are treading on a path that will make you to miss heaven. Even though you are walking towards the growth and expansion of the kingdom. Says who? I mean we say that nonsense. How will I be walking for the progress and expansion of the kingdom of God. And I will not be interested in going in. Everyone's desire is to get to heaven. He who misses heaven can never miss hell. And I refuse to go to hell in Jesus' name. Amen. You should 
you that believe such rumor about me? I love my God and I'm serving him with everything I have. I'm preparing for his coming. You sound so sure about this. Yes, because I've given my whole life to him. Hmm. And may you not be fine wanting on that glorious day in Jesus' name. Amen. So, like I told you, children, it is always good to forgive offenses and forget it. Never allow bitterness in your heart towards anyone, even though it hurts you. Hand it over to God. Just as we read in the book of Ephesians, Chapter 4, verse 31 to 32. Let mommy read it for us once again. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Mm. Be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. Mm. Can you hear that? That is the scripture. And that is final. Daddy. Has anyone done anything that made you bitter or angry before? Yes, I didn't allow it to bother me. I settled with God. I simply told God to forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. But why? Somebody hurts you and you still pray for them? <laughs> yes, my dear. You see, that's what the Bible teaches us through our Lord Jesus Christ in the book of Luke, chapter 23, verse 37. Which says, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. With such spirit, people's action will never bother you and will never make you to be angry or bitter. Hmm. Did you know this man? Who is he to you? Why did you throw it away? Because that man in there is an accursed man, a devil incarnate, and a betrayer. Ah, you don't mean it. It will never be well with him. Ah, come back. He will rot in hell. That is too much. It's not too much. Ah. I've not even said anything. He will not see the goodness of God in the land of ah. the living. Ah. Can you please calm down? Just don't tell me to calm down. Okay, but you need to tell us whatever it is you know about this man. I thought you knew him already. I thought you were here because of him. Okay, he sent you to beg me, right? Not really. We are only here for investigation and confirmation. Investigation and confirmation? Yes. On what? For what? Moreover, if you don't know him, how come you have his picture for your so-called investigation and confirmation? It was given to us to confirm from you what transpired between the two of you. You may not have the time to hear the story. It's a long one. Time? We have all the time. That is why it is called investigation. We are all ears. <laughs> The only thing is, just cut it short. If you do that, we will appreciate it. Daddy, have you ever done anything to anybody that make them angry or bitter before? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. I'm always cautious, so as not to step on people's toes. And if I do, I always apologize immediately. However, my daily prayer to God is that Father help me to always touch the heart of everyone or anyone I've offended, cautiously or unconsciously, to forgive me and never to remember it again. Is that a prayer point? Yes, a very good prayer point that every heaven seeker should always pray. Mm. So we should also pray for those who offend us and those who we offend. Mm, yes, 
doing that will change you and probably change them to reconcile with you. To fill the scriptures, we say, follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. As written in the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, verse 14. Now, there is a woman. I want you all to join me to pray for her this morning. Who is she? The woman I is supposed to marry before I met your mom. Why do you want us to pray for her? Because I disappointed her. I dash her hope of marrying me. It means if you have married her, you will have given birth to us. Well, only God can answer that or determine that. All I know is that I would have had godly, handsome and beautiful children as I have you now. Me, I don't want any other mommy. I love my mommy. Even me. Me too. Children, hear this. You don't determine your parents. God did. We are only caretakers. But always give thanks to God for bringing you to this world through us. I always wake up in the morning cursing him. Why, madam, if I may ask? Because I'm dying slowly. Oh, sorry about that. This man put me in the state I found myself. How? <sighs> Look at how big this house is. Why? Because there is no husband. Oh, uh, I'm sorry about that. But uh, is there no suitor? Or did anything happen to your husband? That is why I said you cannot hear me out. Go ahead. Go ahead. We have the time. You see, I disobeyed God in so many ways. I committed fornication and blamed it on youthful exuberance. Oh. As young ladies, all we wanted to do is to enjoy ourselves. Oh. We were not afraid of any disease at that time. HIV didn't scare us. Neither did we believe we could be victim of any sexually transmitted disease. <laughs> we only wanted to enjoy the present with no understanding of what the future holds for us. Oh. And guess what? Mm. <laughs> we were regular in church. Okay. We carried our Bibles as if we were following all that is written in it. Hmm. That is why I pity young ladies of nowadays. Mm. Mm. Who indulge and engage in immorality. Mm. They are not wise. Mm. Hmm. Daddy, what did you do to her? I caused her a lot of trouble. In fact, your mom knows everything. I was not born again then. So we lived a very rough and dirty lifestyle, which I pray none of you will live in the name of Jesus. Amen. We had been good friends, dating ourselves, until one day, one fateful day. This man took me to a doctor, who had aborted for me four times. He refused because of the condition of my womb and advised us to get married. But my fears took me to another hospital where the abortion was done. Unfortunately, I wasn't lucky. My womb was totally ruptured. I spent Three good months in the hospital to cut the whole story short. Six months after, my friends got married to another lady. I could 
couldn't believe my eyes when I saw the invitation card. But I was mad with myself for falling to his sweet words that no one else fits his life except me. He claimed I was the only meaningful thing in his life. Can you imagine? So one day, I tried to locate Koya. Since I noticed he has been avoiding me from every way possible. But instead of comforting me, he took a turn and beat me. Ah, Koya beat a lot of me. Koya beat me to the extent that I spent another two weeks in the hospital. Ah. Ah. The experience is still fresh in my memory since that day. Koya beat the hell out of me. And what was my offense? I love him. And I wanted to marry him. Koya <laughs> beat me to the extent that I spent another two weeks in the hospital. <laughs> that is why I always wake up early in the morning to cause Koya in my mind. He's married now. The man is happily married now. Don't look at me. No husband. No womb. Can you see how pathetic it is? So, children. Just help me pray to God to touch her, to forgive me, and to forget all I did to her. Pray also that she also will have a good and peaceful home, just as I have here. Do you know where she lives now? Oh. Why do you ask? I don't know. Maybe after praying, we can take it a step further by going to beggar. Mm. Actually, your suggestion is good, but our parents have moved from where I knew them. We also moved from this state immediately after our wedding to this place. I lost every means to contact her. And all efforts by your mom and I to locate her proved abortive. So for now, I don't know where she is. Until one day, I stumbled and met her on this popular social media, the Facebook. Thank you. But has this man in question at any time admitted what he did? Yes. He sent me one useless message on Facebook Messenger. One time, saying he's sorry for all what he has put me through. Is that so? Yes. He even requested that we should see one on one. But I declined. I cannot just stand seeing him. He's a devil. But you just said he begged you through message. Yes. But after that day, I deleted my Facebook account. I don't have any friendship to make with him again. Maybe he has repented. Devil neither begged nor repents, you know. Oh, yes. I had this plea. But I can never forget such experience. It's always fresh in my memory every morning. And don't you think that experience is giving you bitterness of heart? Though you claim you've had this plea? My brother, we will forget about such incidents. We will not be bitter about it. 
Yes. Yes. You are human. But I thought you said you are born again. Yes. And what is that supposed to mean? What is that supposed to mean? about that. Second Corinthians 5 verse 17 says, if any man is in Christ, is a new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And Matthew 6 verse 6 says, forgive us all our sins as we forgive those who trespass against us. So also, Hebrews chapter 12 verse 15 says, Take heed, lest no man fall away from the grace of God. Let no root of bitterness spring up and trouble you, lest thereby many be defied. It's enough! Stop quoting the Bible! I love God, and I'm serving Him all heartedly. You are not my God, and you don't know I'm serving Him. Do you know? Or did you know the state of my heart? No, ma'am, I don't. But we know that the heart is desperately wicked. Who can know it except God? Meaning? What is that supposed to mean? What are you insinuating? Moreover, you said you came for investigation and confirmation. But you forgot to tell me that you also condemn. No, ma'am. Romans 8 verse 1 says, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. And they which are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affection and lust, according to Galatians 5.24. Oh yes, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. The life I live now, I live by faith in the Son of God who loves me and gave himself for me. Ma, are you sure? You just quoted Galatians 2 verse 20. But how does it reflect in your life? It is not enough to quote the word of God. You have to live by it. Have you been crucified indeed? Have you crucified bitterness? Jesus Christ was not angry or embittered with those who crucified him. But he rather prayed for them. People who quote the scriptures without the reflections in their lives, they are liars. They live in hypocrisy and deception. Now get out. Enough is enough. I can no longer tolerate you again. Out of my house. Get out of my house now. Guys, I'm funny, baby. I'm funny. You look like a real. I'm funny. How are you? Ah, uh, uh, ah, Yes, sir. Pastor. Good morning. How are you? I'm fine. God Thank bless you. you. Yes, sir. What happened? You promised to come to church. You are not missing. What's going on? Oh, Pastor. It's not like that, sir. Then what is it? Explain it. Actually, I plan to come on a Sunday. But my friend and my neighbor discouraged me. You need to see them making jest of me. 
discouraged yes, and sir. made death of you. Yes, sir. And you allowed their discouragement to hinder you from coming to church. Hmm. Ah. Now tell me, how exactly did they discourage you? Pastor, how do I explain the mockery? Anyhow, explain it. General Giba, important lady. <laughs> Avani. <laughs> Avani. Ah, where are you going that you are gorgeously dressed like this? Now you sabi. Uh -uh. But am I really gorgeous? Am I looking good? Anyway, I'm going to church. <laughs> Avani. Church? You are not going to church. Do you want to go and seduce God? I mean, the pastor and some brothers in the church. And funny, you are not going to church. Seriously, I said I'm going to church. Come off it. I said you are not going to church. Don't deceive yourself. Simply say you have a date, period. Look at your makeup. Look at your dress. What kind of church are you going? See, we know your style. People like you will say they are going to church. But instead, they attend party. Or go to see the Aristo. Oh, ah, how else do I convince you that I'm going to church? Eh? Is your church a party venue or a clubhouse? Ah, I pity the pastor of that church. Oh. In fact, I pity all the men. Why? Because there will be confusion. All of them will see vision that you are the will of God for them. Even all the married men will fall into your trap by looking you twice. You better don't go to church and cause trouble. It's either they run away from you, or they label you as agent of the devil on assignment, or you cause men to begin to lust after you. Ah, child, free sex for brothers. Huh? We know you now. I sabi you. Afani Adugo. <laughs> Generous giver. <laughs> Mami mo yin yo. Ah, it is true, sister. Hmm. Moreover, the name are funny. What about the name? Is that your real name? I said get out of my house. We will go. We will go. We are just concerned about your life. More so, you are not prepared for the coming of Christ. Moreover, you should know that death can come calling anytime. I will not die but live to fulfill the purpose of God in the land of the living. That is the word of God. Look at me, I'm hungry. And if I am hungry, I don't recognize anybody's face, nor respect anybody. Get out of my house now. Don't push me to do unexpected. But death is inevitable. Also, Christ's coming is imminent. And we discover you are not ready. That is not God's plan for your life. So we are consigned. Thank you. I know what to do. You are not the one to teach me. And I have my Bible to apply to every situation of my life. Bible? Yes. Bible? <laughs> the Bible you don't believe. The Bible you don't apply to your life situation. The word of God dwells in me richly. And I know when to apply it to every situation of my life. Thank you. You can go. Leave now. No need to shout, madam. We will go. We will go. 
We are only concerned about you. But since it is your life, ours is to help and warn you where necessary. But I pray that as God lives, He will open your eyes of understanding. <laughs> I get the new audience. One day, no one do right. Sincerely, the clothes is not a good outfit for church. Unlike what you are wearing now, I guess you are going somewhere important, right? Yes, sir. I'm going for an interview. You are going for an interview, and yet you dress decently. But when you are coming to church, you dress is decently. Pastor, you invited me to your church and I decided to come in my best attire. I thought when coming to church you dress well because of competition. No, 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 no. You dress decently and moderately when you are coming to church. Not too flamboyant and not too seductive so as not to cause men to fall. I thought church is a place to show off your latest wardrobe addition. By dressing to kill. No, sister, not at all. Church is the house of God where we gather to worship. It's not about our dress, but our art. Which are funny they do with this pastor? Which pastor? Ah, look at their pastor now. See me see trouble. Mm. Ah! Pastor one job. This pastor one swim. Ah! Now only see. <laughs> this pastor don't enter him now one chance. Leave a go carry. Ah, ah. See this pastor. Ah, see ya, see ya, see ya. Ah. See ya see they do. Ah. See. Hey. It's just like somebody talking to devil. Maybe the pastor. See, see ya, see they shakala for that. Ah. Pastor de la, see pastor de la, pastor de la. Make the pastor chop and remain for us. We can continue for where we stop. Me no chop, but I no go creep. Nah, true, nah. No, I'm funny now. Nah, if you give anybody now, ah, we talk. Wait, 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 before coming to church. Oh, is that so? Yes, sir. So it means you can dress antimoniously when coming to church? No. Your roommate, who after returning from a night party or outing with men, then comes and change to come to church, is practicing hypocrisy. You must not be worried outside and be sanctimonious in the church. Hmm. You should be modest in your dressing all the time. Okay, sir. Now I understand. Thank you, sir. This is your roommate. You say she sings in our church. Mm, yes, sir. She must be among the college students. I think so. Because she, she sings every time. She has a good, uh, good voice. Mm. Okay. If I may ask, what is her name? Ha, <laughs> Pastor, I can't tell you her name. She will think I intentionally expose her secret lifestyle. Oh. Hmm. Well, maybe, maybe not. However, if anyone is not working right with the Lord, but deceiving herself, she should be called to order. My sister, hypocrisy is not good. It is a sin. How, sir? Coming from a party and outing with men and still sing on the altar of God is an abomination from a defiled and unclean vessel. Now I understand. So unclean people cannot sing in the church. My sister, anyone can sing. In fact, everybody sings clean and unclean. Holy and unholy. <laughs> we hear everybody sing everywhere. But unclean people cannot serve the Lord acceptably. They will offer a strange fire and unacceptable service to the Lord. I just pray that may God have mercy upon your friend. Amen. But the most important is that Jesus loves you. He wants to save your soul. Why not give your life to him? He died for you on the cross of Calvary 
So that's not perish, but have eternal life. Eternal life? What is eternal life, sir? Eternal life is life after the end of this world, but without an end. And only those who truly have Jesus will enjoy it. Why now? What about those who do not have Jesus? They will serve eternal punishment in hell. And not for 100 years. Not for 1,000 years. Then for how many years, if I may ask? Hmm. For eternity. Without ending. So now what about me? I have not given my life to Jesus. Because I still want to enjoy myself more. But I love God. If anyone or you die without having Jesus in your life, it is hell. Hell? Uh-uh. Who are you? You are even sitting down on my couch. What the hell are you doing in my house? Who? Hmm? Are you asking me that question? You, of course. But I've been living here with you for a very long time. Eh? Yes. They came, wanting to forcefully displace and replace me. But many thanks for your cooperation. You did not allow them. Huh? Benny, I want you to know. I want you to know. I want you to know. He be not me. Here. Here? Yes, it is here. <laughs> How do you know, sir? How do I know? Revelation 21, verse 8 in the Holy Bible. I think you can read. It says, you please read for yourself. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and warmongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which Burn it with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. That is hell, my sister. The place of unending torment. Except you repent. Now and surrender your life to Jesus. He loves you. He prepared heaven for you, not hell. Please make a wise decision now. Understand. What are you saying? How do you mean? Huh? How do I explain this to you? Explain anyhow! I demand an explanation! Hey, hey, calm down. Please, we don't need to shout. I will explain. Uh, you see, I have been living with you for the past 15 years. Eh? 15 years? Yes, 15 years. How come I don't know you? I've never seen you in my life before. You are a liar! Don't you ever call me a liar because I don't lie. I am always factual and on point. You may be lying occasionally and be adding to your punishment, but I don't lie. Pastor, well done, Pastor. Thank you. Ah, <laughs> I just say, Ma, quickly yarn you something. You know. Ah, <laughs> you see the girl where you see. <laughs> I'm funny. No be the kind of girl where you feed a mingle with. Ah, 
I'm funny, no be better person. Ah, chop, make and chop. You don't know the meaning of full and funny. I'm funny, I do go. I chop, you chop, you, my friend chop, everybody chop, chop and chop at the LT, chop LT, chop able. I just want to tell you, <laughs> no risk your life. I, I was preaching to her. I just preached to her now. <laughs> you, you preach, you preach to I'm funny. Can I shock you? What? <laughs> Which was? She just gave her life to Jesus. I'm funny. I'm funny. I'm, I'm, I'm funny. I'm funny. Uh, I'm funny. Uh. I told you yesterday that I've been living with you for the past 15 years. That still amazes me. Because I've never seen you in my entire life. Never! And when I told you yesterday you, that you're lying, you slapped me. I still cannot fathom this out. It is a very hard puzzle. My dear, there is no puzzle here. This is reality. Reality? Yes. What is real? I mean, what is real in this one? Though it's looking more like it, please tell me what is really going on in my world. I don't seem to get it. Okay, okay, okay. I will explain everything to you. You see, don't be afraid of me, okay? The truth is that I have been living with you for the past 15 years. 15 about... years? 15, you keep saying 15 years, 15 years. What 15 years? Where and how did I come across you? I have never met you before. And you know it. Stop forcing yourself on no, me. No, 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 no. I'm not forcing myself on you. I'm only fulfilling my part of you in the journey of your life. How do you mean? See, I am neither a spirit nor a force. Then what are you? Who are you? I am inside of you. I dwell in your emotions. Those supernatural beings you sent off called me out of you for you to know that I truly exist. I am your feelings, 
know, the feelings emanating from your mind. I am what you feel and how you react. <laughs> feelings? Yes, feelings. The feelings operating from your mind. Let me say, I've been around you for more than 15 years. But off and on. Just that I finally settled in your mind 15 years ago when Koya dumped you to marry another woman. I was so concerned and wanted to help you never to be happy with him. I made you curse him for jitting you. No, it pained me so much. And that's why I'm here to help you never to wish him well. He's a bastard. Yes, he is. He will meet his Waterloo one. Oh, yes, I agree with you. I agree. Stop hissing. Um, why not pick up the glasses and smash it instead? Yes. Aha! You are doing well. Uh, that will suck for your right. It will never be well with him. Mm -hmm. Can you now see that we are flowing together? That's how I've been before those unfortunate beings called me out of you. Hi. I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian, nothing's wrong with you. Now, can you see something is wrong with you? In fact, a lot of things is wrong with you. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 14, that the backsliding heart will be filled with his own ways. If somebody's black sliding, he will not notice, but he will be happy doing what he's doing, feeling that he's always right. Well, you need to check it. Eh? I noticed I called you when you started bringing all this kind of dancing step into the church. Dancing all kind of dancing step. Dancing skinemu, dancing asunto, dancing eh, eh, shaku shaku. You are the same spirit of person that was singing last week Sunday. Say, baby, what is it? Bese, bese. What is the meaning of that in the church of God? Eh? You be singing and dancing, rolling your body seductively and making men to be looking at you. Not only that, you'll be dancing and bringing out your mouth, thrusting out your tongue like this. What kind of dance is that, my sister? Eh? Ah, don't let people deceive you. We are enjoying you. We are, they are not enjoying you. They are leading you out of the path of righteousness. Godly men don't dance and sing like that. Eh? Bring out your tongue. Eh? Ah, ah. It still amazes me. I'm, wor my, I, I'm worried about you. Eh? How is your spiritual life? You are doing that before the king of kings? Trusting out your tongue, dancing before the Lord of lords? And you didn't do that in heaven. I'm praying for you. 
You will not be a castaway. But with this action and your line of, you are falling able to bring that way. But I'm praying for you. Since I was transferred to the church, I've noticed you. I pray you will not fall away from me in Jesus' name. Even your own to your life. She wrote me at two bottles. Unless she wrote me at two bottles. She won't see a year right there. In your own life. She won't see a two bottle. Unless she won't see your life. She won't see a year right here. In your baby. I you. Give me your dear red. Lord, give me your baby red. you. Give me your dear red. Lord, give me your baby red. Why can't you keep your mouth shut? Why did you tell the pastor about my lifestyle? For your information, it is the money I got from my hustling with men that got me this house. So go and hustle. Tell Biara. No, it wasn't go away from my life. <sighs> go away. Go away from my life. Tell Biara. Go and hustle. Go and hustle. Go. Don't forget your sweet pastor. Stay. Mamba o shorty ti, oni go ni turn inu re. I get the inu o di inyo, one day no I do right ni. Or I mi ko e she si le, ati bo go she ro ara. Go to the go by you, for you by Jesus you see I'm funny. Now they don't chase you because you give your life to Jesus. I'm funny, ha. How you take live your life? How? I'm funny. Uh, you know, we boys for this town, eh? We de consider how they take satisfy us. Eh? So we get enough space. Okay? Come along with us. Come and stay with us. We will take care of you. Eh? I prefer to live in an uncompleted building. Rather to live with boys and men till I get married. And there is no more immoral lifestyle again. Hmm? I've chosen to flee all appearance of evil and its temptation. So, thank you. I'm funny. So, what do you do talk now, BC? We boys, eh? Our appearance now, now evil unto you and temptation. She, you know, I'm funny. Oh, you go suffer outside there. You go suffer. Eh? We go help you. Know, I'm funny. Come stay with us. Come love with us. I'm funny. No, thank you. I appreciate your concern. Hmm? So let me be, please. I'm funny. I'm funny. I want to come in to favor her so that she will see her husband to marry. No, you cannot come in as long as I'm here dwelling with her. Favor, joy, or happiness have no place where bitterness is dominating. <laughs> now, get away from here! Every power that wants to stop favor from entering my life. I come against you in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, every power blocking me from receiving favor. I come against you in the mighty name of Jesus. Every power blocking me from receiving favor. I need favor. Father, please favor me. Favor me, oh Lord. Every power, every principality, every spirit blocking me from receiving favor. I come against you in the name of Jesus. I come against you in the name of Jesus. Stop shouting and stop receiving yourself. See, you cannot chase me. You cannot attack me. Except you replace me. Replace you with what? I have told you I'm neither a spirit nor a force. 
but a feeling in your emotions. Until you change how you feel, you will never be free. How can I change my feelings? Oh, so you expect me to tell you what will use to replace me? Oh, no way. That is examination of practice. <laughs> you don't tell students the answers to examination questions. Oh no, they are free. How can I come against this foul spirit and monster? <laughs> foul spirit? Monster? Where are they? You, of course! She replaces me with F J H. <laughs> she does not even know what that means. Even if she knows, she will never consent to that. Mm. Let me go and make her more bitter today. <laughs> the ways to overcome bitterness. First, like I said, bitterness is a feeling. It's what you feel in your body. It's a feeling. Anybody can feel anyhow. You can feel good. You can feel bad. You can feel fulfilled. You can feel loved. You can feel that you are happy. The same way bitter people feel, you can feel bitterness at what is irritating you, at what all somebody has done to you, at every negative thing that is what still in, in your mind. The only way to come out of bitterness is written in the book of 1st John, chapter 3, verse 20. Mamba o so titi, oni go ni ton inu re, agiti inu o di inyo, one day no wa di rae. Or any call a shesile, a tibo go share on a ra. Go to the book by Jesus. How are you? Yes, man, you're welcome. Please uh, help me to deliver this message to Sister Fanny, your roommate. She's no longer living here, she's no longer my roommate. Well, why now? What happened? Nothing, ma. Can you please help me to call her that I deliver a message to you? Don't bother. I won't be able to get it across there. Eh? I can't collect it for her. Oh, but no. Please help me now. I need to deliver this to her because I'm traveling tomorrow. Don't you get it? I said she's no longer living here. She's not my roommate again. We are not on talking terms. Okay. Okay, please, can you give me her number so I can call her? Her number? Sorry, I don't have it. I've deleted it. You don't say. But why now? That's not good enough. You shouldn't have done that for your roommate. For God's sake. I beg, I beg, I beg. Waiting be your own self. Ah. Friendship and talk is not by is not by force. It's by choice. Mm -hmm. That means you are the one that have something against her. And you should have settled this as a Christian. Or are you not a Christian again? Thank you. We will settle it in heaven. Hmm? Yes. I pity you. Which heaven? That is even if you get there. Mm. Look, hatred, malice, and bitterness will not get to heaven. So say so. Thank you. You, you've been there before. Pardon me, all the fall away. Do you know 
know that Koya now has four children. Two boys and two girls. Those children could have been yours, you know, if he married you. But he did not marry you. And to worsen the case, you don't even have a womb to bear children, all because you aborted for him. Huh? What kind of person is this Koya? Deny me entrance. Deny you entrance? Yes. Hey, come stop there. Who are you? I have forgiveness. Forgiveness? out. How come? Forgiveness came in. They spread the fragrance. How time flies. How time flies? Yes. How time flies. Would you believe that two of Koya's children are now in secondary school? Uh-huh. And those children could have been yours, you know.
because you have spirituality, then you may be able to get on your pleasures. Am I praying at me? How am I praying at me? Teach me how to pray. I don't want to pray at me. Teach me how to pray right. Help me, Jesus. Teach me how to pray right, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Daughter of Zion, God bless you. Amen. You are welcome. Thank you, sir. The church admin told me you brought another 15 dozens of leather chair again. God bless you. Amen. The Lord will not forget your labor of love. Amen. You single-handedly painted our Amen. church last year, December, and Amen. gave us five split seats. The Lord will bless you. Amen. The Lord will prosper you Amen. more and more. Amen. He will decorate your destiny. Amen. The Lord will beautify you. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much, sir. You are welcome. Thank you, sir. God bless you. Thank you. I thank God my business is prospering. Hallelujah. Oh, Pastor, are you really sure I am a daughter of Zion? Oh yes, you are a daughter of Zion. How come God has forgotten me? God didn't forget you, daughter of Zion. He make all things beautiful in his own time. When is the time? My joy is not complete. And I'm really suffering in silence. Daughter of Zion, the Lord will wipe away your tears. Amen. He will give you joy unspeakable Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I just came back from the mountain. But still I'm not fulfilled. That is why I come to you. So that you can pray with me. I don't know how I'm praying amiss. Praying amiss? Shall we pray? Our Father in heaven, we thank you. Thank you, Jesus. We give you all the glory, O oh Lord, for your daughter. Thank you, Jesus. We give you glory and praise, O oh Lord. Uh, Lord, we pray that you will have mercy upon your daughter in Jesus' name. Lord, Pray that you will help your daughter in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. James. James. 3 verse 14. But if ye have bitter envy and strive in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. <sighs> Ephesians 4, verse 31. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and the evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And verse 32. And be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. <sighs> Daughter of Zion, is there anyone you are fighting with? Fight? No, I don't fight. 
Are you sure? You aren't keeping malice with anyone? Not at all, sir. Why did you ask? Because the passage the Lord gave me as I was praying for you suggests that you've not forgiven someone who has hurt you. Can you remember being bitter or angry against someone lately? Lately? No, sir. Or maybe in the past. Is there someone you have not forgiven? Is there someone who has hurt you you've not forgiven? You've not let go? No, sir. Except a man who dumped me and married another lady. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh. Um, did you did you see him of of resent? Did you used to contact him or did you always remember what he has done for you and then become bitter and angry? Yes. Maybe. Whenever I remember what he did to me, I always curse him in my mind. Ah. Sir. It can never be well with him. Ah. Recently I heard he had four children. Yes, he dumped me. Why he destroyed my whole home? True series of abortion I have for him. God will not show him mercy. Ah. Ah, 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 daughter of Zion, you are going too far. You shouldn't be cursing like this. You are a new creature. You are renewed. You are born again. You are really manifesting bitterness that God is not in support of. So what will you suggest I do? Fine. This is not my recommendation, but the recommendation of the word of God. The word of God suggests and commands that you should forgive and forget. Yes. You should forgive and forget, repent of all bitterness towards him. Leave the rest unto the lost end. That's what you will do. Did you hear what the Lord told us? What the Lord revealed unto us while I was praying for you in Ephesians 4? Verse 31 and 32. Okay. I will try. Good. I will try. Ah, this is cheating. This is cheating, sir. It is cheating. It is like God is not on my side to defend me. How can God allow such a man to go scot free? It's what he did to me. Leave that in the hand of the Lord. You just forgive and forget. God will make a way for you where there's no way. He will heal your wounds. He will renew everything that is damaged in your life. He is your creator. He can recreate. He calls things that are not as though they are. Be it new womb, good husband, are all in his hands. All you need to do is to believe in him and he will give to you and rebrand you as daughters of Zion. Pastor, please stop calling me daughter of Zion. God has forgotten me. Says who? God didn't forget you. God doesn't forget anyone. Daughter of Zion, he has written your name on his palm. Isaiah 49 verse 14 to 16. As we are talking now, you are in the mind of God. Yes. He's thought towards you. It's a thought of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. Jeremiah 29, verse 
11. The Tao Zion. Just believe the word of God and apply it. Okay. I will try. Good. Why did you go to the pastor? Why won't I go to the pastor? When everything is beyond you, I don't seem to understand what is going on in my world again. I am depressed every day. And I think my case is spiritual. And a spiritual matter requires spiritual attention. <laughs> you think so? Is that not so? Moreover, what is this with you? They are my cohorts and friends who help me in ruining life. <coughs> they have come to assist me since you have been seeking for help too. Uh uh. Why do you want to ruin my life? Why? You are wicked! I've told you, it's not me. But your feelings, I am just your feeling. Don't you get it? You are the one who wants to allow us to ruin you. Anyway, here with me is anger and revenge. We, we are, are determined, determined to ruin you because, because the, the battle, battle line has been, has been drawn. drawn. Oh yes, the battle line has been drawn. I am anger. I live and dwell with people who cannot control themselves. You allowed me 15 years ago when you allowed the sun to go down without dismissing me. Why are you behaving as if we force ourselves on you? No, we didn't. You opened for us willingly. Thereafter, I handed over to bitterness who took over from me, I must confess, he ruled and reigned in your emotions very well. Hmm. He did an excellent job. <laughs> I make people to do unimaginable things that make them look like a fool because anger rests in the bosom of a fool. And I am revenge. I always make people assume the position of God. Who said, Vengeance is mine, I will repay. Romans chapter 12, verse 19. See, my work begins immediately. Now, call Mr. Koya. Call him. Tell him you are ready to hear his plea. But he must be ready to marry you too and dump his wife for you. Call him. When? Now. Ah, Miss Kutonomi, how are you? I've been trying to call your number all this while, but thank God, 
Today is a good day. Fine, you say. Anyway, I'm ready to listen to your plea. But the only condition is that you must be ready to continue from where we stopped. Since your wife has already given you four children. I think you should shift over to me now. Perhaps God will give me my own children too. So, are you ready to drop your wife now and marry me? To settle our scores? Ah, uh ah, -uh. Miss Kotonomi. Why are you thinking like this now? You know that's not possible. To dump my wife and marry you. Oh. What is not possible? Didn't you dump me to marry her? Do the reversal now. At least, she already has children for you. Or do you want me to remain childless? me look. I am not a Christian. So what? Do people not do it? Anyway, others may. But I will not. The word of God only give room for one husband and one wife. I can't marry two wives. You can't marry two wives. But you can destroy me by picking another. Koya, you can render one useless to make another one useful, right? Is either you marry me to reconcile or you forget about me forgiving you. Period. He declined. I knew it. But don't worry. But there is another advanced way to revenge. It's a joker, I will tell you later. Let's give you benefit of doubt. Who knows, maybe you will come back after you retake. Oni lojo igbala, ore mi Jesu nke. Bi wo bagbo ure, ma se se okon rele. Wa si bi agbelebu, ton shon fe je iwe nu mo. Okon re agbo mi nira, wa bo lo wo eru e she. Eni yon roti yola, she roti e tu boton o. God. I knew you before Koya knew you. Koya, when did you give your life to Jesus? I gave my life to Jesus Christ, my master, on the 5th of October 2005. Because he died for me on the cross of Calvary. I gave my life to you before him. What of Kotonomi? I gave my life to my master in year 2002. What date? Uh, um, you don't know the date. Never mind. We have records here. Even if you don't keep records. Oh God, you are being partial. Why did you give Koya a wife when he abandoned me? Why did you give him children when he has destroyed my own womb? Why did you give Olukoya peace of mind when he has threatened my own? Check Koya's work since he became born again. Any backsliding is he sanctified. He struggled with Adamic nature. So he backslide over the years because of sin and worldly friends who enticed and discouraged him. But God restored in 2010. And finally got sanctification experience on 1st of July 2011. He suddenly evangelized. But from 2014 to date, he has been doing consistent evangelism with evidence of soul winning into the kingdom. Before, 
His prayers were centered on material things. But since 2016, he has been focusing on kingdom matters and intercession for others, including Miss Kotonenu. His orphans are stable, both in praises and giving. He has overcome anger, lust, and craving of fleshy desires by grace. He only needs to work on complaints and talking too much. He is presently asking for grace on a daily basis. If life is not fair to me, you still remain a faithful God. Why are you not being faithful to me? Why don't you show your faithfulness as God in my life? Please, check her work since she became born again. She claimed to be born again, but not with genuineness of heart. A superficial one that is common these days, where there is no true confession of sins and no regeneration through the blood. She only answered altar call so she can get all her problems solved through the intervention of the Son of God. She was not concerned about sanctification experience. She never asked for it. That is why she is still full of Adamic nature, carnality, fleshy desires, and worldliness. No personal evangelism except general contribution and support. No personal intercession for others except her participation in general gathering. She is very good when it comes to giving and buying things for the house of God for acknowledgement's sake, but not doing too good in offering of praises and thanksgiving. She is full of anger, bitterness, and vengeance. Filthiness and defilement are evident in her life because her mind is corrupt. Kotonumi, by human judgment, who, between you and Koya, has satisfied everyone's qualifications? You cannot talk. By divine judgment, Psalm 115 verse 3 says, I dwell in heaven and I do as I please. Though I am unquestionable God, yet I remain very, very reasonable God. You accuse me of giving the look your children and you claim that you became born again in the year 2002 while he gave his life in the year 2005. Between the year 2002 and 2004, you aborted for Koya four times. Do you want to know the dates, the time, and where each one was carried out. We have record of everything here. It means, as a claim born again, you were still fornicating with Koya, an unbeliever, a sinner then. Is that not so? Oh yeah, on the other hand, after he had maltreated you, he realized that he was a sinner. He repented and genuinely surrendered his life to Christ and got married to another lady. 
after four years of waiting for the fruit of the womb, Koya was stricken with a life-threatening disease. His family held on to the promise of God on divine healing as written in the word of God. His wife, who was spiritually committed and stronger, cried unto God and invited mercy over the situation. Koya was healed. After he had gone through a lot of afflictions and he had spent so much money on medicine. A year later, the wife cried for mercy again for children. And mercy intervened. And they had children. Otonomi, you have forgotten that it is not of him that will it, nor of him that run it, but of God that showeth mercy. I remember you also cried for mercy. And because I love you, mercy came around to help you. But your bitterness drove her away. Why are you accusing heaven over your situation? Why questioning God for your bitterness? Even after the heart prophet and the investigative beings from heaven came around to help you because your lifestyle was neither worthy of heaven nor the imminent rapture. Your pride, hardness of heart and bitterness deprived them of a place in your life. The only advice for you from here it's for you to genuinely repent and surrender your life for salvation perfected in the blood of Jesus. See yourself as a sinner and repent genuinely. Forgive Koya and all those who have hurt you. Forgive Koya because we have it on the record that Koya is still pleading. He's begging you for forgiveness. He's even making intercessory prayers for you. We have record of all this. Leave vengeance for me. For these reasons, Kotonomi Afeson, you have no case to argue. I arise. You did not even bother to check who was calling. Maybe it's Koya. It's Koya. Maybe he has agreed to your terms. Won't you pick the call? Pick the call! Ah, uh, hello? Hello, sir. Oh, good morning. How are you? Thanks for picking this call. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I, I, on the matter we discuss, we need to talk more about it. So when can we come and see you? My wife and I has, have agreed to come and see you. So when can we come? Is next week okay by you? Uh, okay, please send your address to my phone. Thank you. He requested coming over to see you, right? Uh, that, that's not good enough. I think we should call him back and tell him not to come if he has not agreed to the town. Shut up! Who are the we? I rebuke you over this matter. I silence you in the name of Jesus. Whatever you call yourself, feelings, emotion, 
thoughts, suggestions in my mind. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Stop confusing me. You silenced and rebuked me? Yes. Who are you? You must obey the name of Jesus Christ. For I have been given a name that is above every other name. That in the name of Jesus, every new must bow. Both things in heaven, on earth, and underneath the earth. And every tongue must confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord. To the glory of God the Father, I rebuke you and subdue you in the name of Jesus. So I command the three of you now. I subdue you. I command you in the name of Jesus Christ. Bow for me! yourself I don't need this. Uh, I know but on a second thought it should be helpful. How do you mean? I mean he will be coming to meet you with his wife right? Mm -hmm. How does that sound to you? Will you be freely disposed to meet his wife knowing fully well that she's already occupying position in his heart? Don't you know you won't be free to talk and express yourself the way you want to? I mean, I mean, pouring out your mind to convince him. You should think about this very well. Because with his wife beside him, that will not be possible. Think! Think! Mm. How do you now want me to do this? Very good. Now, call him back and tell him not to come with his wife. Hello? Hello, Koya. Good morning. Ah, Miss Koton, good morning. How are you? Well, I'm okay. I'm actually calling to confirm if you are still coming. Yes, we are still coming. We are still very coming, but it's just that you have not sent the address to my phone like I requested. We have. Do you mean you are still coming with your wife? Yes, yes. No. I want only you to come. It's only you I know. Ah. And you are the only one I want to see for now. That may not be possible. You see? Uh, actually, I will still discuss with my wife. I will discuss with my wife. But, as a Christian brother, you don't visit a sister alone. Just as a sister, you not visit a Christian brother alone. We are Christian. Agony of the fall away. God, in the bitterness and resentment of your heart, the rich painful, and it's hard. Hello, sister, good morning. Good morning. I just want to find out from you. Half about the matter because I've not heard from you. I've not heard from you again. Have you listened from your heart? Have you let go? Yes, I've called him. And we have discussed. He even promised he's coming to see me with his wife. But I refused. I asked him to come alone. Why? You should have allowed him to come with his wife. Yes, that's what you should do as a Christian. You see, 
coming with his wife will give room for clear conscience. By the way, I hope we didn't give him any condition. Yes. Please do not give him any condition. Do not scare him. Do not threaten him. But Pastor, what if I suggest he should marry me? Would that be considered as a threat or condition? Ah, Sister Kutonomi, why will you say such a thing for crying out loud? No. The, the, the man you are talking about is already married with children. No, that's not possible. Moreover, as your pastor, you know I will never consent to that. Never. No, that's not Christian life. Wait for your own time. God will do it. <sighs> when you forgive me. Pastor, I'm over 40. Yes. God is able. Sarah was 90 when she gave birth. With God, all things are possible. Yes, you just do the, the needful thing. Because bitterness is not an enemy you can toy or accommodate at all. Now, please, let us be Christian in our decisions. Do all you can. Do all you can to make sure that you are in the workers' meeting tomorrow. Sister Kotonomi, please let all this thing I've been telling you get into your heart. Please. How funny. We miss you for town. Honestly, we guys, eh, we miss you. But how funny, why you can't drop us like that? Ah, you know, we know good do. Zonfie, honestly. We miss you. Ah. You see. <laughs> for how long? Shall you continue to live in bitterness and anger? Ah, sister, you do not love yourself. Hey, fail not you. Yes. I have given my life to Jesus. Everything about me now is new. <laughs> you too can taste and see. The Lord is good. He loves you. Me. He died for you and I. Otaburuku ni gbongwe koro. Kisi jeti nyo test wadu. See, once you give your life to Jesus, and then we come to your waywardness, and then we come to suffering in your life, and you begin to enjoy His benefits. Do you know there's, there's life in Christ? There's life in Christ. I beg, leave that one, Jare, you know, Jesus. I beg, more than leave that kind of rubbish. I never get time for that Jesus now. I see the time. I see the sit down and they enjoy tired. Let's go and forgive. I'm funny. Master! Yes, Master! My high kuru kuru like this. Uh -huh. Me and uh, Afani, we stand together at the top. Uh -huh. Afani, yes, it's up here. Yes, I love Afani. Yes, ah, yes, yes. Pastor, Pastor, it's up here. Pastor, Pastor, you this bitterness. Afik bato bate mi jepo. Ah, hey. You are very, very wicked. Oh, no. no. You got it all wrong. I am not wicked. Ah. I am not wicked, but your wicked mind is responsible. Yeah. You failed because you don't always engage the word of God to renew your mind. You see, those feelings you exhibit, which I represent, took place in your mind. Even if I'm giving you suggestions in your mind through your feelings, why don't you always renew your mind by engaging the word of God? Ah, 
Romans 12 verse 2 says, Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewal of your mind, that you may prove that which is good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Oh, sorry, oh. I'm sorry. You don't always renew your mind daily with the word of God. And that is why you have failed. You see, you are your own problem. Sorry, oh. Ayira 